Hi everyone, I am your fave Nurse B. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. If you are new here, consider subscribing. I have videos for CNAs, CMTs, LPNs, RNs, new nurses, old nurses, aspiring nurses, nursing students. I have something for everyone. So please consider subscribing. Make sure you turn your notification bell so that you do not miss a video when I upload. Let's get into this. You know what, I, I told myself I was gonna light, I was gonna light a candle, you know, get the ambiance going. So I want to talk today about, let me see, I got notes. Give me a moment. Seven things you need to know when you are working for an agency. So basically, what do you need to know when you go in for your first day, second day of working an agency? Really your first day at a new facility and you don't know anything about that facility. Seven things you need to know, seven things you need to ask. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video is because I have worked, um, I've done agency work for the past year and what I've noticed and also when I was working, um, when I was working at, in a nursing home, I floated. So there were some certain things I need to know then too, but I've worked in the agency for over a year and what I've seen is they don't give you orientation. Like they don't, their orientation is you come in and it's like, oh, you heard, um, it ain't really that much to a girl. It's easy. Just all you got to do. And it's like not really that much of an orientation. And at least not in like the sense that we think orientation where they really go through and show you everything and tell you what's going on in that particular facility. And sometimes the person who's orientating you is someone who's agency. Like, so they don't even know that much anyway. So it's just like you pretty much just out there like trying to figure everything out on your own basically. And that can be a little dangerous because you're more than likely in the facility that needs help. So it's probably already some other stuff that's going on in the facility or not going on in that facility that should be going on. But that's another video. Let's just get into the seven things that you need to know or that you need to ask on your first day of an agency assignment. Now, just as a little background, I'm an LPN. I work in nursing homes. So this, this could go for hospitals as well as nursing homes, and it can go for RNs and LPNs. But I do want to tell you my background is LPN working in nursing homes. So that's that. All right. So the first thing that you need to know, the most important thing I believe that you need to know is ask them, where is the crash cart? Where do you all keep your crash cart? If there's a special room, do you have to have a code to get in? Do you need to have a key to get in there? know where your crash cart is because if you're the nurse on duty and a person falls out they're not breathing no respirations no nothing no pulse and they're a full cold you need to initiate cpr so you have to know where the crash cart is in that facility so that you can resuscitate that patient you can't just tell the police or tell the doctor or tell the family Ah, this is my first day. I didn't know where the crash cart was at. What? Yeah, that's not going to be okay, boo. That's that's not going to work. So ask them where the crash cart is. And once you get done with them kind of showing you around and you ask them all these different things, take a minute before you start working to look at that crash cart and see what's on there. Because a lot of times, crash carts are not stocked. It can get very scary very quickly if you do not have a stocked cat stocked if you do not have a stocked crash cart it can get very scary i mean just because we're working in nursing homes does not mean that people are not cpr and that you don't have to do everything in your power to resuscitate that patient but that is another video as well hold on that's my baby daddy my husband actually I drink yeah if my voice is cracking it's because my two-year-old is yeah she's a little infected little person hydrate all right so number two is this is so simple but I mean who is simple but believe it or not it's been time I'm like wait I don't even know find out the number to that facility and also the address to that facility if you have to just write it down on a little like note card, a little index card and keep it with you because somebody will ask you, what's the number here? Or you will call the doctor or call the exchange or you'll call the um, pharmacy, whatever, and they need a callback number. You're like, oh crap, I don't know. And it's just like, that's wasted time. Plus you kind of look silly if you don't know the number or the address to where you work at. Because even though you're agency, you still work for that company at that time, right? So you should know something like that. 
and while you're at it make sure that you also know the fax number as well sorry y'all also know the fax number as well so the next thing is to have uh, know where the MD list is or the number to the all the doctors that um, come to that facility. This is really important because once again, if something happens to your patient, you want to be able to contact the doctors. Now, more than likely, the numbers are going to be in that patient's individual chart. But say, for instance, something happens and there's another doctor you have to call or you have to fax something to a doctor. You want to make sure you have their numbers and their fax numbers as well. Like I said, most of the time it is in the patient chart, but depending on that facility and if it's super unorganized or some anything can happen somebody could have your patient's chart and you just need to call the doctor real quick it could be a paper chart like it could just be all paper charting in the facility and somebody take the chart you can't find it it's like okay but you still need to call the doctor so yeah make sure you know where the md list is and their fax numbers if they have a list that they keep in that facility the next thing you need to know is the lab info. So um, you need to know because say for instance the doctor comes in, they order a UA which is a urine, urine analysis. Uh, they, they order that and you collect the urine. They're like okay where do I put this at? Like what, where do I put this? You know you need to know where the lab fridge is. Where do you put specimens at? And you need to know the number so you can call the lab and you know let them know what you have there. Or some facilities they have it where you put all your lab information in the computers to order the labs. This happened at the facility and I didn't even know how to put labs into the computer because I'm like no one orientated me how to do it. No one even orientated me on giving me like a password to even get into the computer system. So yeah, it, it can get really like what the heck. So ask them for that information. Make sure you know about the lab. How do you contact the lab? How do you... Um, where are the specimen cups? Where are the um, like the bags? There's like those biohazard bags that you have to put specimen cups in. Do you have to write out a physical requisition sheet for the lab to come pick up? Or do you call it in? Or do you put it on the computer? You need to know those things because if an MD comes in and orders something stat, you need to know, okay, what do I have to do? How can I get this done? it's all gonna fall on you even though you're agency nurse you can't always just say i'm agency i don't know because you're there to do to do the job so you need to know and it is frustrating because people they just kind of throw you out there and expect you to get it and you don't want to just leave stuff behind because it looks sloppy like okay i didn't know how to do this so i just left it like you don't want to do that but sometimes you have to and you just never know when a situation is going to come back on you as a nurse and you're like, you can't use that excuse of being an agency nurse. So try to get as much information as possible on that first day during that orientation. Or if you barely even get an orientation, you just need to still ask someone and figure it out. So the next thing is, next thing is, and this is something I've never done, but I'm like, okay, when I was making this list, I was like, I really need to have done that get the information for whomever the management is at that facility i can't tell you how many times i've gone into a facility picked up a few days and somebody be like yeah lori da, da, da. i'm like who is lori they're like that's the d-o-n i'm like oh no idea i never saw the d-o-n never saw the a-d-o-n and when i say d-o-n it's director of nursing and shout out to the subscriber who asked me to make sure that i let you all know what the acronyms are for certain medical terms or just jargon out here because i pretty much assume that people know it but at the end of the day, like, I can't really assume that because my videos are for everyone. Like, comment, and subscribe. The DON or the Director of Nursing who is over the whole nursing field, I mean the whole nursing department, or the ADON, which is the Assistant Director of Nursing. I, I don't know who the heck they are. I don't even know who the administrator of that nursing home is. And so you should really make sure you get management's information, their numbers, because sometimes, you know, some of these nursing homes are small and you might be the only, repeat, the only, only nurse in the entire facility i've had that happen to me um and if something were to happen i don't have anyone's contact information or anything and that can get really scary really fast so try your best to get that information especially if you work nights because more than likely at nighttime you will be by yourself but it really depends on the size of the facility okay so um 
The next thing, and this kind of goes with the lab, but make sure you have pharmacy's number and their fax number. Um, because if you need to order something stat, there's like say for instance, I don't freaking know. Say for instance, your patient needs to get on some IV fluids. So, or IV antibiotic and the doctor's like, I want this done stat. You need to make sure you have the pharmacy's number, call them or put the order in for them to bring that stat to your facility so that you can start this medication for your patient. So you want to make sure you have the pharmacy's number and the fax number as well in case you have to do anything. But more than likely, fax numbers are programmed within their fax machine. But who knows? Sometimes it's not. Sometimes they have the oldest, crustiest fax machines. So... Just keep that in mind, you all, but make sure you have pharmacy's information, okay? You need to have pharmacy information because anything can happen. You need to make sure you can contact the pharmacy to get the medications that you need or to ask questions about medications. All right, so what number are we on? Number six? No, no, that's not. Is it, did I say six things or six? I think it's, wait, let me count this. One, two. I guess that was last. Okay, that was last. Six things, but really, here's the seventh thing. And this is not necessarily you need to like ask about or know on that first day, but you have to protect your license. No matter if you're the new nurse, you're the agency nurse, or I'm floating, no matter how, where you fit in that whole, you know, whatever scheme of nursing at the end of the day your license needs to be protected and say for instance you go somewhere something happens say you have a loved one in a hospital or a nursing home and something were to happen to your loved one unfortunately and you went to the nurse and you're like okay that, that, that happened and then nurse is like i don't know i'm agency i i didn't know i was supposed to do that like you would be like what are you not a nurse? Like you would be really upset, wouldn't you? So never use I'm an agency nurse da, 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 as an excuse to not do your job. And you know what? I'm going to do a second video talking about, you know, should you become an agency nurse? When do you know if it's for you or not? And just some things to consider as an agency nurse. So let me know if you all found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video. And I do have some other videos about working as an agency nurse that I will link down below. Make sure you go watch them if you have not already. Comment something on this video, anything that you may have learned, or um, put something on here that you want to add to it. I want to know, do you work as an agency nurse? Um, and also, if you have not worked as an agency nurse yet, why are you considering working as an agency nurse? I would really love to know that. That probably will give me some inspiration or some insight going further um, with other videos. So that's it. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel and share my videos with anyone who finds them helpful. Yeah, I gotta get this throat parched. Also, make sure you follow us on the Your Fave Nurse Be Facebook group. It is a group for everyone. We come together, we share our stories, we vent all that jazz on that group. And also follow me on Instagram at Your Fave Nurse Be number one. And check out my website, www.yourfavenursebe.com. I have study templates for med surge and pharmacology. I'm going to be adding more items and I might be offering more services for you all. I just do not know yet. But go ahead and go on there and i also have my nursing notes up there for sale as well i gotta go you all like i gotta go all right love you peace